the beginning, the internet was void and mostly barren, except for a few nerds and geeks and university professors sending electronic mail. Then came the browser. It was called Mosaic, and it was good. Later, as the internet grew, it became more and more apparent that browsing the web would bring the internet out of the realm of universities, geeks, and nerds, and into the mainstream, regular Joe. Netscape started creating a product its own business, started selling its web browser called the Netscape Navigator. It had a few years or months of glory, but with the release of Windows 95 came Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer was a free web browser built into Windows. Who would want to pay for a web browser when you would just get one for free? And thus began the period known as the Browser Wars. Now, the browser wars were primarily a fight against market share. The method used was to create special features into each of the browsers. Programmers could use these features to make websites do cool things that the competitor browsers could not do. So sites started popping up all over the internet with special little icons and pictures that would say, this site is optimized for Internet Explorer, or this site has been built for Netscape. And that was because it was using these different features of those browsers and would look, look better on that browser than the other browser, encouraging people to switch from one browser to another, primarily between Internet Explorer and Netscape. All of this fighting was a real nightmare for us programmers and IT folks because it became our responsibility to support all of these quirks. In fact, Internet Explorer even has a special quirks mode that it goes into when it detects a site has this legacy HTML written in the late 90s and early 2000s to make it so that those older sites will continue to look and feel and work regardless of the fact that they were poorly written HTML for 15 plus years ago. Now today the winner, in my humble opinion, turned out to be Google's Chrome browser, a web browser that wasn't even a twinkle in Larry Page's eyes back in the 90s. As more and more sites were updated to try and be optimized for Google search, it would be easy for developers to also optimize them to use the new Google Chrome. Of course, as Netscape lost its market share and wasn't able to keep running a company selling a browser that everybody was giving away for free, uh, Netscape sort of dropped off. But the engine that runs Netscape uh, got redeveloped into the Mozilla system, and Mozilla then began Firefox, and Firefox is the browser we know today that follows the same principle as uh, Netscape Navigator. So we're now at the point with three browsers. We have Google Chrome using an engine called Chromium to render, to render pages for people. We have Internet Explorer using its own proprietary Windows version to render, net, uh, to render pages. And we have Netscape uh, which and Firefox, which is based on Netscape, which is using the Mozilla engine. So again, more of a headache because we have three different ways of creating these pages. So as more and more standards get released, <clears throat> we try to release new websites to the Internet that are basically following It'll work in Google Chrome, therefore it'll work in Firefox, and eh, might work in Internet Explorer, who knows, we're not quite sure because it's a bit more of a proprietary engine, so we don't exactly know how it works. So what's, what's changed in 2020 is Microsoft has moved away from their own rendering engine that was used, driven by Internet Explorer, and they've moved to the same engine that Chrome uses, the Chromium engine, to render web pages. This is great because it means that all of the existing modern pages of today will render perfectly fine in, in Microsoft Chromium Edge. The problem is, what about all these legacy applications? You see, even though most of the internet contains sites uh, that are modern and that work in Chrome, the, the internal companies, the companies that uh, you know, have been around for many years. They're running Microsoft Windows. And the developers of those companies are like, hey, we don't want to have to support all these different types of browsers. What are you going to do? And then the powers that be said, okay, you just have to write your websites, your applications, so that they'll work with Internet Explorer. You don't have to worry about the other browsers. 
So yay, this solved our problem as developers because we wrote sites for Internet Explorer. But as things changed and Internet Explorer gets upgraded, they have to keep making sure that the new version of Internet Explorer is still compatible with all the old types of code that was written 15 plus years ago. So what this means for you is that when you would go to a website today in, uh, in Microsoft Chromium Edge, it's trying to do everything. If your site is new and fancy, it's going to load it in this Chromium engine to make sure that everything works successful. If it detects or has been told that this is an older site that was designed for Internet Explorer, it will actually load a version of Internet Explorer inside your browser. And uh, you'll see that little special E icon that pops up telling you that it's in this Internet Explorer mode. So one browser that can do both all of the Internet Explorer rendering for all of your legacy applications. And also when you go to all the new uh, modern design standardized HTML5 sites, it will use the Chromium browser for all those types of sites. So it's trying to get everybody and sort of end the browser wars. Now, are the browser wars really over? Not exactly. What's happening is the move is now no longer towards features, so it's no longer in the programmer's pain in the butt. Um, it's around security. So which browser is giving you the most security, the most privacy, the most bang for your buck? So the, the wars still continue, but the war now long is no longer over these little different features that one browser can do and another browser doesn't do, or they do it a little bit differently. So less of a headache for us. Uh, now we just need to see who wins in terms of what gives you the best security. So there's a brief overview of the browser wars from around 1999 to today, 2020. Have a great one. Geek Wisdom. Disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this article are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of my employer. Examples of analysts and code used within this presentation are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real-world products as they should be considered as based on limit and possibly dated open source information. Assumptions made within this presentation are not reflective of the position of any private or government entity to which the author is presently employed.